Alan here from the Casual Tryhards, back with another episode of Creative Deck Building. Today I've got a deck uh, that's based on the card Lightning Helix. And uh, you know, I always liked instant, uh, instant sorcery cards rather than creature cards. And it's something that's more difficult to do in Magic Gathering because, uh, well usually creatures make up the bulk of your deck just because they're a permanent card and they can attack every turn for damage. So get uh, more bang for your buck that way. An instant or sorcery card you use once and then it's gone. But for me, I just like the idea of cutting out the middleman and uh, doing the damage damage yourself. If you're a wizard, right, you're like casting spells. It's like, why summon a creature to do your work for you when you can just blast someone in the face with a fireball or lightning bolt? So lightning helix. I love lightning helix for that reason. And um, I'll just say what it does, it uh, deals 3 damage to target creature or player, and you gain 3 life. For 2 mana, that's it's an amazing deal, so it's just red-white, and that, that's what uh, gets you the value there, it's, it's a 2 color spell. And uh, so if you want to base a deck around that, you need that repeatability, kind of like a creature. Uh, you're turning a spell into a permanent with Isochron Scepter. Isochron Scepter allows you to uh, imprint Lightning Helix and then play it again every turn. So I'll just explain how that works. As It's an artifact with imprint. It uh, only costs two to play. When Isochron Scepter comes into play you may remove an instant card with converted mana cost of two or less in your hand from the game. So Lightning Helix fits for that. Um, then its ability is Pay to tap, you may copy the imprinted instant card and play the copy without paying its man cost. So yeah, that just uh, turns your instant spell into a permanent kind of version that you can repeat. And so other things that I've kind of like that that's the that's the main idea that I started with when I was making this deck. Lightning Helix is, Helix is awesome and Isochron Scepter lets you play it over and over again. So that's pretty good start, but then I went through it and found a lot of other really good red and white spells that complement that idea of gaining life and doing damage. Um, so here's some of the cards that I chose four of because they're they're so good. So I went with four of Lightning Helix, four of Isochron Scepter, four Spark Troopers because it, it is a creature, but it's, it's like a one-shot creature. Uh, you have to sacrifice it at the end step. But it's a 6-1, Trample, Life Link, and Haste. And yeah, at the beginning of the end step, sacrifice Spark Trooper. So yeah, it's, it's kind of sticking with the same idea, because you're gaining life from the Life Link, and you're doing a bit of damage if it uh, gets through in the attack. Tablet of the Guilds combos really nicely with these uh, these spells, because uh, it's multicolored. There are all a lot of these, almost all of them, I think, are multicolored spells in this deck. So yeah, with Tablet of the Guilds, whenever you cast a, uh, or sorry, as Tablet of the Guilds enters the battlefield, choose two colors. So obviously you choose red and white. Whenever you cast a spell, if it's at least one of the chosen colors, you colors you gain one life for each of the chosen colors. So what that does, like, when you're playing Lightning Helix. Uh, it's gonna do the three damage, but if you have a tablet of the guilds out instead of gaining three life You're gonna gain five life and if you had maybe two tablet of the guilds you gain uh, Seven life and so on so it's gaining you a lot of life and that's that's Compensating for the lack of creatures that you would have for blockers. You're just you're absorbing the damage and gaining back the life uh, So another four off Boros charm so, Boros Charm is kind of a backup, like if you didn't have Lightning Helix in your hand but you got the Isochron Scepter early on, you could always imprint a Boros Charm because it's very good. It doesn't have the life gain, but it deals 4 damage to target player, uh, so you could just use it for damage that way. Uh, there's other options, so it also could be used as permanents you control are indestructible this turn, or target creature gains double strike until the end of turn. So, both awesome options. Um, permanence, yeah, I should 
reiterate that it's permanence that you control gain indestructible, not just your creatures, so it saves your artifacts as well. Very cool. Um, Oros Reckoner, yeah. You're gonna... There's, there's minimal creatures in this deck, but they're very good creatures, so Boros Reckoner is just awesome because whenever he is dealt damage, it deals that much damage back to target creature or player. So it's a, it's a blocker that you put down and it makes your opponents very hesitant to attack you because you get to reflect that damage back at them. So those are all the four of cards that I chose. They're just good enough to have four of them. Some other good cards here, I got Change, Change of the Rocks for control, it la allows you to exile a uh, target creature and opponent controls, and it kind of, it, it's an enchant mountain, so it's an aura that goes on a mountain, so you're, you're chaining your opponent's creatures to your mountains, so it only really works, it's a white card, but it only really works in uh, white and red decks. I've got a Johnny Vengeant, because he's an awesome planeswalker that's red-white, why not throw him in there? He's great. Uh, Deflecting Palm. Deflecting Palm is another, uh, kind of like the idea of Boros Reckoner, where any damage that would be done to you, you deflect it back. So the wording exactly is, the next time a source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, Deflecting Palm deals that much damage to that source's controller. So it's an instant spell. You can deflect damage. Got wear and tear for destroy artifact and destroy enchantment. That could be subbed in with something else, but uh, it might be useful. Uh, Searing Meditation. Searing Meditation has the same idea of Tablet of the Guilds, where Tablet of the Guilds is amplifying the life gain you're getting from Lightning Helix or whatever, this is amplifying the damage that you do. So it's an enchantment that goes on the board. Whenever you gain life, you pay two uh, of any color. If you do, Searing Meditation deals two damage to target creature or player. So yeah, on all of your life gain triggers, you're getting a chance to do more damage if you have the mana. Legion's Initiative. Um, it's an enchantment that gives red creatures you control plus one and white creatures you control plus zero so it's kind of like plus one plus one there's not a lot of creatures uh here to go with so it's it's not really used for that uh for that buff it's this ability that i wanted this and it's just one uh, i just have one copy of this so it's not a heavily used thing in this deck but uh the ability is one red one white exile legions initiative exile all creatures you control at the beginning of the next combat, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control, and those creatures gain haste until the end of turn. So the idea with this card, it's actually comboing with Spark Trooper. Because Spark Trooper needs to be sacrificed at the end step, if you have the extra mana, so you need 6 mana, uh, 4 to play, play the Spark Trooper, and then another 2 to activate this ability, um, you exile your Spark Trooper after combat, and then he gets to come back on the next turn for combat again. It's pretty nice when you get uh, a 6-1 Trample Lifelink Haste twice. Oh, and actually with the buff, it would be a 7-2 Trample Lifelink Haste. Nemesis Mask. All right, Nemesis Mask is a really funny thing that I threw in, because it combos with Boros Reckoner. Uh, it's an equipment. Hey, uh, Three to play it, three to equip it. All creatures able to block equipped creature do so. So if your opponent has amassed a fairly large army and you have Boros Reckoner on the board, if you equip this and attack, all of their creatures have to block him. And then you get to, uh, his Boros Reckoner's ability is to deflect that damage back, right? So you get to deflect all of that damage that was dealt to Boros Reckoner back to your opponent's creatures or your opponent himself. Sweet. Finally, uh, War Leader's Helix, just because you can't put any more than four Lightning Helixes in, so throw another Helix in there. It's a bit more mana, but a bit more damage and life gain as well. Eight Mountains, Eight Plains. I've got some Windscarred Crags. Uh, it's 
It comes into the battlefield tapped, but when it does, you gain one life, so that's just another life gain trigger that can go with Searing Meditation. If you want, you, there, there's probably better lands you could put in this, but uh, that's what I went with. Boros Skilled Gate, uh, dual land, not that amazing in this deck, but it works, whatever. So I have managed to uh, get to play test this deck a few times now, and it's it's always worked excellent, actually. The life gain is is enough to hold your ground, and the damage is, is awesome. It's got lots of versatility, very fun to play, so I would highly recommend trying out this kind of idea, basing your deck on a Lightning Helix. It's a great spell. Uh, any questions, leave questions in the comments. I'd be glad to answer them. So this is my deck for today. Thanks for watching.